Hello and welcome to this edition of News Today, a series where we briefly discuss and analyze important news of the day. Without delay, let's explore the headlines first. Taiwan shaken by strong 7.4 magnitude earthquake, the most powerful in 25 years. IMD issues question regarding increased tornado activity in northern Bengal. South Asia region including India risks squandering demographic dividends, says the World Bank. Integration of technology into criminal justice system requires careful consideration, says CGI. Delhi High Court has declared Haldiram as well-known trademark. Measuring the emissions and energy footprint of the ICT sector, implication for climate action report released. Starting with the very first news. Taiwan shaken by strong 7.4 magnitude earthquake, the most powerful in 25 years. The earthquake occurred as a result of reverse faulting near the boundary between Eurasian and Philippine sea plates. A reverse fault is a split between two sections of rock in Earth's crust caused by compressional forces. Notably, Taiwan is prone to earthquakes as it lies along the Pacific Ring of Fire or Circum-Pacific Belt. Let's now discuss and understand about the Ring of Fire. It's a horseshoe-shaped string of volcanoes and sites of seismic activity around the edges of the Pacific Ocean. Roughly 90% of all earthquakes occur along the Ring of Fire and it has 75% of all active volcanoes on Earth. It is the result of plate tectonics as it traces the meeting points of numerous tectonic plates including the Pacific, Juan de Fuca, Cocos, Indian Australian, Nazca, North American and Philippine plates. Much of the volcanic activity occurs along subduction zones which are convergent plate boundaries. As a heavier plate is subducted under another plate, it melts and produces magma that erupts as a volcano. A stretch of ring of fire border between Pacific and North American plates is a transform boundary where plates move sideways past one another. This boundary generates a large number of earthquakes as tension in Earth's crust builds up and is released. Moving ahead in the news. IMD issues caution regarding increased tornado activity in Northern Bengal. In recent years, many tornadoes have formed across India. A warning bay of Bengal, heated land and strange wind patterns could be a reason behind this. Let us first understand about tornado. Tornado is a land-based vertical column of violently rotating air that extends from thunderstorm to ground. It can have wind speeds in the range of 105 to 322 km per hour. They develop from severe thunderstorms in warm, moist, unstable air along and ahead of cold fronts. Thunderstorms are severe local storms associated with thunder, lightning, heavy rain, hail, and strong winds. Tornadoes are most common in the United States, Argentina, and Bangladesh. In India, these are reported in eastern states of West Bengal, Orissa, and Jharkhand during pre-monsoon period. India is very well known for the formation of tropical cyclones. Tropical cyclones and tornadoes are both powerful atmospheric phenomena, yet they exhibit distinct differences in various parameters. Let's understand and discuss these differences. Tropical cyclones spanning hundreds of miles wield the capacity to affect vast areas, resulting in heavy rainfall, storm surges, and widespread flooding. In contrast, tornadoes are relatively small in scale, with diameters typically measuring only a few hundred yards, but they pack intense destructive potential primarily causing localized destruction. Tropical cyclones thrive in environments with low tropospheric vertical shear and near-zero horizontal temperature gradients, purely originating over oceans. Conversely, tornadoes necessitate significant vertical shear of horizontal winds and large temperature differentials primarily developed over land. While tropical cyclones boast lifetimes measured in days, tornadoes are fleeting lasting only minutes. Understanding these disparities is crucial for effective forecasting and mitigation strategies to minimize the impact of these natural hazards. In our next news, South Asia India risks squandering demographic dividend, says the World Bank. As per South Asia Development Update, Jobs for Resilience, released by World Bank, the South Asia region including India is not reaping its demographic dividend. Let us first understand about demographic dividend. A demographic dividend is an increased economic growth potential that can result when share of working age population that is 15 to 64 is larger than the non-working age. According to the update, India is expected to enjoy this window for 37 years starting 2018 and up to 2055. Issues in harnessing the demographic dividends, let us have a look at them. Firstly, jobless growth. In this, the employment ratio that is employment relative to total working age population is only 59% in the year 2023 
in South Asian countries that is significantly lower than the other emerging economies of approx 70%. For this, the reason being exceptionally low shares of women in employment and weak employment trends in non-agricultural sectors. Other than that, the private investment has slowed and growth is mainly driven by the public investment. And lastly, slowing global growth and heightened risks also acts as a concern. To overcome these issues, few recommendations have also been provided, which includes greater openness to international trade by reducing barriers to trade, development of flexible labor laws and efficient land markets, investment in infrastructure with a focus on transportation and agricultural sectors, improving the female labor force participation by wage subsidies and tax benefits, and lastly, improved human capital for easy switching of employment from agriculture to non-agriculture. Moving on to the next news. Integration of technology into criminal justice system requires careful consideration, says the CGI. Let us first start by understanding the need for technology in the criminal justice system. Firstly, to facilitate speedy and fair trials, leverage technology to avoid delays. It is needed for the potential to shape cause of crime detection. For example, the AI aided in cutting investigation time by 63% in USA in rescuing children from sex trafficking. Moreover, Algorithms are capable of forecasting the criminal activity for the promoting predictive policing. Improved accuracy with reliable forensic solutions, emerging biometric systems including iris recognition. Though it is also facing some concerns. The issue of privacy to questions of accountability and transparency. And other than that, the exclusion of those without internet access or technological proficiency. And moreover, AI is not free of prejudice and biases. To overcome these concerns, few steps have also been taken. Network for Evidence Tracing Research and Analysis Lab which can further strengthen the investigative process of CBI in the digital domain. The National Intelligence Grid which is an integrated intelligence master database structure made for counter-terrorism purposes. If we talk about way ahead goals, those are Clear guidelines and safeguards will be provided to prevent misuse of advanced technologies and protecting privacy rights. Multidisciplinary teams consisting law enforcement officers, domain experts, including data analysts will be implemented to deal with the global nature of crime. And lastly, the digitalization of foundation process such as filing of FIRs and more. Moving ahead in the news, Delhi High Court has declared Haldiram as well-known trademark. The High Court declared that Haldiram as well as the red oval-shaped mark of the brand as a well-known mark in respect of food items restaurants and eateries in terms of the Trademarks Act 1999. Trademarks Act defines a well-known trademark as a mark which has become so as to the substantial segment of the public which uses such goods or receives such services that the use of such mark indicates a connection. India's intellectual property rights policy management framework encompasses various types of IPRs, each governed by specific legal provisions and subject areas. Patents regulated under the Patent Act of 1970, which protect novel, inventive and industrially useful inventions for a term of 20 years. Next is Trademarks, which is governed by the Trademark Act of 1999, safeguard brand names, logos and designs for commercial entities for 10 years with the option of renewal for another 10 years. Designs fall under the Designs Act of 2000, offering protection to new or original designs for 10 years, extendable by another 5 years. Copyrights under the Copyright Act of 1957 cover creative, artistic and literary works providing authors with protection for their lifetime plus 60 years while producers and performers are safeguarded for 60 and 50 years respectively. Geographical indications or GI governed by GI Act of 1999 preserve products with unique characteristics linked to specific geographical regions for a decade renewable for an additional 10 years. Lastly, Trade secrets protected under common law secure confidential information with commercial value for as long as confidentiality is maintained. In another news, measuring the emissions and energy footprint of the ICT sector, implications for climate action report released. The report has been jointly released by the International Telecommunication Union and the World Bank. This report presents the energy and an emission profile of information and communication technology sector and assesses the 30 highest emitting countries, including India, for telecommunications. Let us first have a look at the key highlights of the report. It pointed out that the rapid expansion of digitalization is requiring more energy and resulting in greenhouse gas emissions. 
in which at least 1.7% of global emissions stem from the ICT sector. Other than that, one third of the world's population, that is 2.6 billion people, remain unconnected to the internet by connecting whom will drive emissions even higher. The ICT sector accounted for 60% of renewable power purchases in 2021, pointing to the potential avenues to abate increasing emissions. Also, there is a lack of comprehensive data on country-based ICT emissions and France is the only country where regulator compiles telecommunication sector emissions. For the ICT sector, few recommendations have also been provided. Those are A data-driven approach is required to make informed policy decisions, set realistic emission reduction targets and monitor progress. Moreover, the technology transitions in ICT sector have the potential to reduce emissions, but careful planning is required to ensure inclusivity. And lastly, regulatory modifications along with incentives and collaboration between the ICT and energy sectors can promote sustainable energy access. If we talk about the sources of ICT sector emissions, in terms of consumer devices, computers, smartphones and more acts as a source. Data centers and lastly, in terms of connectivity networks, there are mobile networks and fixed networks. The personality news for today is Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay. She is in news recently as she was remembered on her birth anniversary. She was born in Bangalore and was a freedom fighter, social reformer, an arts enthusiast and a politician. Talking about her contributions, she played a key role in the All India Women's Conference. She was also the first woman to run for a legislative seat in India in the Madras provincial elections. Kamla Devi also convinced Mahatma Gandhi to give women equal opportunity in Salt Satyagraha of 1930. She later joined the Seva Dal and trained women activists. In 1936, she became president of the Congress Socialist Party. She exhibited the values of courage, patriotism, leadership, justice and more. As we conclude today's main news, let's go through some quick updates. The Supreme Court has referred to constitution bench questions raised in the petition on the interpretation of Article 293. As per Article 293 Clause 1, executive power of state extends to borrowing within the territory of India upon security of consolidated fund of state. India plans to build its first privately managed strategic petroleum reserves by 2029-30. It aims to enhance stockpiles against potential supply disruptions. The project will be overseen by the Indian Strategic Petroleum Reserves Limited, a special purpose vehicle created by the government for building and operating strategic petroleum reserves. Pyra cropping system practice in Orissa is dwindling in recent years. Pyra cropping system is a relay method of sowing in which short duration pulses or oil seeds are broadcast in standing crops of rice two weeks before its harvest. It does not allow interventions such as tillage, weeding, irrigation and fertilizer application. The World Health Organization unveils a digital health promoter prototype, SARA, harnessing generative artificial intelligence for public health. SARA is a smart AI resource assistant for health which uses new language models and cutting-edge technology. It can provide information across major health topics including healthy habits and mental health. It aims to provide an additional tool for people to realize their rights to health. According to researchers, the Indian Ocean hosts a phenomenon known as gravity hole or Indian Ocean geoid low, where the Earth's gravitational pull is weaker and the sea level dips by around 100 meters. This creates a gravitational or geoid anomaly with the depression in the ocean and a lowest point in geoid. Researchers from Bangalore's Raman Research Institute have started work on Pratush or probing reionization of the universe using signal from hydrogen. Pratush is currently funded for pre-project studies by ISRO. It is a future space radio telescope that will be placed in lunar orbit. India delivered two state-of-the-art Dornier 228 aircraft to Guyana. Dornier 228 aircraft is a twin-engine turboprop multi-mission maritime patrol aircraft. It is manufactured by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. It can be deployed for tasks like surveillance, gathering information, medical rescue and transporting goods. Singapore rules out hosting the Commonwealth Games of 2026. The Commonwealth Games takes place every four years. The members of Commonwealth nations, along with overseas territories, island states also participate in this. It is managed by the Commonwealth Games Federation, based in London, England. Earlier it was known as the British Empire Games. They were held for the first time in Canada in 1930. Before we go, it's time to put your knowledge to test in today's segment of Test Your Learning.
Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.